Well, we are going to get started. Welcome, everybody, uh, parents and supporters, to your uh, own orientation. Uh, welcome, and uh, we are so excited to be able to sit down in this virtual space with you and hopefully go over uh, any questions that you, and concerns you might have. Uh, and we're going to have a bunch of speakers here today that's going to be able to answer a lot of those. Uh, my name is Brett Farquharson, and I am the manager of Student Life. And uh, I am one of the members here that is organizing the new student orientation. Uh, and part of the student orientation is, uh, is to welcome our parents and supporters who support uh, students uh, at our university. We know how important uh, the role parents and supporters play in supporting their student. And uh, throughout this presentation, we're gonna give you some tips and tricks on how you can support uh, uh, your child or another person in your life who you're supporting. Uh, here at McEwen University. I would like to uh, recognize that we are on Treaty 6 territory. Uh, we acknowledge that the land on which we gather in Treaty 6 territory is a traditional gathering place for many Indigenous people. We honor and respect the history, languages, ceremonies, and culture of the First Nations, Métis, and Inuit who call this territory home. The First People's connection to the land teaches us about the inheritance responsibilities to protect and respect Mother Earth. With this acknowledgement, we honor the ancestors, children who have been buried here, missing and murdered Indigenous women and men, and the process of ongoing collective healing for all human beings. We are reminded that we are all treaty people and responsibility we have to one another. So for all of you who are in attendance today, you are going to be entered into a draw to win a prize uh, from the McEwen M Store. We do have a lot of great sweaters and hoodies on campus. And for two of you who are in attendance today, I'll be doing a draw afterwards and you will be entered to win uh, a prize uh, with one of these hoodies or sweaters. So I will be in contact with you immediately after or e early on tomorrow, and we will be in uh, touch and getting you your prize. So for today, we are going to be reviewing, uh, I just want to review a few things before we get to all of our other guest speakers today. Uh, the new student orientation website. Uh, I would really encourage uh, the student that you're supporting to visit the new student orientation website. Uh, if you, uh, we have uh, Danny in the in the in the chat here, she'll be adding a couple links into the chat, and you can go and view these different pages. Uh, but the new student orientation website is where a, a majority of the information about for new students is being housed. You can also check on the McEwen.ca. There will be a lot of information on there for them. But please visit the new student orientation website as we've organized it all out for students to be uh, able to get the information they need as quick as possible. We are encouraging them to also attend any virtual information sessions. So we did have a lot of first year students join our first session yesterday. Uh, on the new student orientation website, there is links to uh, uh, sign up for these events. There'll be virtual events just like you are a part of right now. And they'll be uh, hosted by different members of our campus community. Uh, and they'll be going all the way to August, or September 3rd. Another one is to visit our, our, on the website, we do have a 360 campus tour. Uh, we are gonna be returning to campus this year. So if you want to, your, uh, the student you're supporting to familiarize themselves with our campus, we do have a 360 campus tour they can click through. There's also a pre-recorded presentation that they can watch and hear a, a small guided tour. Uh, but we are also gonna be hosting some in-person campus tours. Uh, walking around the campus is a big part of uh, your new student orientation. Uh, and we are gonna be setting up small uh, group tours throughout the month of September and your student would have received information about how to get involved in this one. There's also going to be the first year mentorship program. The first year mentorship program is new this year. We're actually pairing up senior level students with uh, our new first year students and they will be put into smaller cohorts uh, where they'll actually be able to connect with other first year starting this year as well as connected with that senior level student to answer any of those basic questions uh, and how to kind of be a student here at McEwen. Uh, so tell them to please uh, follow their McEwen email as their mentor will be connecting with them early September to get them um, into their group. 
And finally is we are doing a YouTube live for our new student orientation welcome video on September 7th at 11 a.m. So we would encourage you to encourage your student to join that session on YouTube. Uh, you'll be hearing much more from the different speakers around our campus and we will be giving out a, our grand prize of an online learning package. We'll be giving away a laptop, a headset and a wireless microphone. So uh, I know that's a lot of information the thing, the nice thing is that all of your students have received this information throughout the summer. Uh, we do encourage them to check their My McEwen email. That is where we do all of our communications to students. We also have our social media channels, but the best way of getting that information is through their My McEwen email. Uh, you can also email us at firstyear at mcewen.ca, or if you're on campus, you can stop by the Welcome Center in Building 7. The Building 7 is one with a big clock on it, and we can help answer any of your questions there and direct you to the right place on campus. So that's with more of what I wanted to speak on. I do want to touch on the different people coming who will be speaking with you today. We do have Dr. Craig Monk who will be speaking first, our University Provost and Vice President Academic. We have Tim Tang, the Vice President of Students. Miles Dykes, Students Association, McEwen University. Karen Ravignolo, for our Academic Advising Center, our manager there. And the Chair of uh, Wellness and Psychological Services is Tori Pino. So these uh, guests are going to be speaking to all of you today. Uh, we did have a um, questions that were sent out to us in advance, so we will be doing our best to go through them all. At the very end, we will have an opportunity for you to type your uh, questions into the chat box if you want to ask them. We are going to end promptly on 7 o'clock, so I want to respect your time and our guests that are here today. Uh, but thank you again for joining us for this session. And I'm going to pass it on to our Provost, Dr. Craig Monk. Thanks, Brett. Uh, welcome, everyone, and uh, welcome to McEwen University. Uh, privilege is a word we overuse and sometimes misuse in contemporary parlance, but I can say without reservation that it's my true privilege to speak today to the family members of so many new McEwen University students. Thank you for joining us and thank you for the faith that you've put in uh, us at such a crucial time for everyone as we emerge from the pandemic. I am Dr. Craig Monk and, and I'm Provost and Vice President Academic at McEwen. We know the past year has been tremendously difficult, but what you and our new students have been able to accomplish during that time has been extraordinary. You've had to provide support in unique ways to ensure the academic success of those closest to you. And we're thrilled that McEwen is the individual choice each of you have supported for your family members. As provost, I'm dedicated to maintaining a culture of academic excellence at McEwen by ensuring that our teaching and the research that feeds it meets the high standards for which we have become known. That culture of academic excellence is rooted in the attention we pay to program development and delivery, infrastructure like our library and information technology, services that support students, and supplementary activities like athletics that bind us to each other and connect us to campus. McKean University is proudly place-based, but over the past year, we've worked hard out of necessity to refine our virtual learning environments as well as our approach to hybrid learning. We've heard from students about what's worked well for them as well as what concerns them and we're confident in our ability to support student success as they transition back to campus in the coming weeks. From the McEwen Health Centre to Access and Disability Resources to Kena Waxton Indigenous Centre, we have support programs for the classroom and the student experience beyond it. Our goal over the past six months has been to design this upcoming academic year to emphasize safe, flexible, in-person learning, making use of our unmatched campus facilities. You can be confident that students will have meaningful experiences rooted in campus life, whether their courses are in person, online, or some hybrid combination of the two. Only 15% of our programming is fully online. So you will almost certainly find that most of the classes in which your students are registered have some meaningful face-to-face -face component. This will obviously vary from discipline to discipline and professors will have more detailed schedules rolling out to their classes next week. We have state-of-the-art air filtration on campus. I've learned more than I ever wanted to know about MER filter ratings over the last six weeks. And we deep clean high contact surfaces regularly. 
Our focus is on keeping folks safe in locations where physical distancing is not possible. And so we are directing mask use and may require it in many classroom settings. We will have a rapid testing program in place for the autumn, and we will host vaccination clinics for individuals who are not vaccinated and who want to be exempt from that testing. 18 months ago, when we threw on the web our face-to-face -face courses back then out of necessity, we did so in an emergency fashion. And with that quick action, we were able to deliver all the promised learning outcomes for a semester that ended much differently than it began. But the additional tools that we've developed to offer online programming in 2020, 2021, are the same tools that we'll now use to supplement face-to-face -face delivery, to maintain contingencies against any lingering public health uncertainty, and to prepare for a future with more hybrid learning, a future with more flexibility for students and faculty members alike. We have placed great emphasis on hiring and retaining faculty committed to teaching and to engaging students across a range of activities. In the face of adversity, these faculty members have shown an enduring commitment to unique course projects, original research opportunities, and practical work experiences that create a solid foundation for our students. We believe, of course, that education is transformative and we're committed to challenging students' preconceptions discovering with them what they need to know in order to succeed, and working with them to establish further a commitment to lifelong learning. I hope you and our new McEwen students have a rewarding and meaningful year. Thanks so much again for being with us. Thank you, Dr. Monk. Uh, we are now gonna pass it over to our AVP uh, students, uh, Tim Tang, who will be talking to you a little bit more about uh, what you need to know uh, here at McEwen about more of our services. So Tim, I'll, I'll pass it on to you. Thank you, Brett, uh, and good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, today for this parent orientation session at McEwen University. Uh, as Brett mentioned, I'm Tim Tang, Associate Vice President of Students, uh, and I'm here today to welcome you as parents and supporters of students to McEwen. Uh, after a year unlike any other, uh, we're so excited to have students back on campus this fall as part of our vibrant McEwen community. Uh, we know uh, that as parents and supporters, uh, you play a very important role in a student's transition to university, uh, and that you and your students likely have many questions about what to expect uh, and where to get started. Uh, and we hope that this session uh, will be one opportunity for you to learn about the McEwen campus, connect with important resources, uh, and hopefully, uh, albeit virtually, uh, meet some other parents of incoming students. We know that coming to McEwen is a big step for students uh, and Student Affairs is here to help provide a rich array of opportunities for uh, students to learn, to grow, uh, to discover who they are and how they wanna make a difference in the world. As you prepare your student for the upcoming year, I'd like to highlight some of the services that are available to students as they navigate the transition to university life. Uh, you'll hear uh, from a few of those units, uh, including the Academic Advising Center tonight, uh, which, uh, which is a unit that works with students to explore program options, assist with registration, uh, and provides support throughout the university experience. Uh, you'll also hear from Wellness and Psychological Services, a unit that offers any student enrolled in a credit course at McEwen access to free professional counseling with psychologists and clinical social workers. We also have many other units here to support students Careers and experience help students navigate their career path with confidence, uh, giving them advice, providing resources, organizing events, uh, and letting them know about co-curricular activities and experiential learning opportunities, such as placements and co-ops. Writing and learning services are available to provide feedback on students' writing. Uh, their paper doesn't need to be finished. Students can submit a few paragraphs or a draft to start receiving support. Uh, the Office of the University Registrar uh, is available to support students with their overall admissions experience, including finalizing applications, administering fi uh, financial aid, uh, and answering general advising questions. Access and disability resources facilitates accessibility uh, and ensures accommodation supports are in place so that students can participate in post-secondary education fully uh, and equitably. And as you've heard uh, from Dr. Monk, Kihu Watson, uh, which means Eagle's Nest in Cree, as a home away from home for McEwen's Indigenous students, 
Uh, here, students can gather, work, and grow uh, in a community that uh, honors the distinctive knowledge of Indigenous peoples. McEwen is so much more than a place to attend classes. Uh, there are lots of people here who care greatly about helping students succeed. Uh, and so we really do hope that you will encourage students to reach out uh, and ask for help if they need it. Uh, they do not need to do it alone. Uh, and while as parents and supporters, you can't book students appointments or make them attend, you know, you do play a very important role uh, in helping to educate students on how they can access our services. Uh, and so one thing to note about university life is that there are often different departments and units that support different aspects of the student experience, as you've heard. Uh, in high school, uh, students might visit one counselor for all of their mental health and academic needs. And uh, here at McEwen, knowing where to go for help and support can sometimes be overwhelming for students and uh, helping them to find the correct email, phone number or room number can go a long way in helping to alleviate some stress uh, and encourage them to seek support. Uh, and so having an idea of what's available early on really helps when something goes wrong uh, because students then don't have to figure out what might be possible when they're already in crisis or, or panic mode. And finally, we hope that you will encourage students to get involved. Uh, there's so many opportunities here at McEwen to get involved in campus life through social activities, clubs, sports, and more. Uh, and I would argue that being engaged on campus and in the community uh, is almost as important as the learning that goes on inside the classroom. Uh, and it will help students to prioritize making connections with their peers, uh, upper year mentors, uh, as well as their professors. Um, and so going to university, we know, can be an exciting time, uh, but it can also be challenging and overwhelming for students who are navigating uh, new way ways of learning. Uh, and so we really hope that this uh, parent orientation today uh, will give you a sense of, of how we're here to help uh, and to support you and your student as they navigate the transition to university life. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tim. And just to reiterate, I really want to make it clear, this, your students here, they're not alone on our campus, like Tim was mentioning. It might feel like we are a very big university downtown, but it's a very tight-knit community. And when we're walking through the hallways, we do recognize the students. I know I do, and I'm standing in the front. So we do get to know the students on our campus, which is really good, and definitely when it comes to supporting them and what Tim is saying about getting involved. Uh, and that transitions to one of our next speakers about getting involved, especially with this, the Student Association. So we have Miles Dykes here. He is the president president of the Student Association, and he's going to share even more services available to your students and what Sam you can do for your students. So, Miles, please take it away. All right, thank you so much. Uh, thank you all for being here. It's great to present to you all tonight. Now, I'm just going to share my screen as I have a presentation to share with you all. All right, so like Brett said, my name is Miles, and I'm the current president of the Students Association of McEwen University, or SAMU for short. The Students Association of McEwen University, or SAMU, uh, is a nonprofit organization working independently from McEwen University to support students. And our purpose is ultimately to enrich the student experience by focusing on non academic needs. Uh, myself and the, my fellow executive committee members, SAMU staff, and elected student representatives work together to serve the needs of the larger student body. And we achieve this through an array of student driven programs and resources. So here I have a presentation that will outline some of the key things you need to know about SAMU as you're assisting a new student. Uh, so first off, we are located at 10850 104 Avenue Northwest, otherwise known as the corner of 104th Ave and 109th Street. Uh, we have a brand new building we're very proud of dedicated to SAMU and hosting our students. And you can have a virtual tour of our building anytime by visiting samu.ca slash building, as you can see up on this slide here. So one thing that we have is student fees, and these are included in McEwen tuition, and therefore we have loads of free programs, services, events, and various resources to support students throughout the year. Um, as well, we have a wide variety of volunteer opportunities. So we offer support to students through non-academic services and programs mainly, and I'll give you a, more about, a bit more information about some of these programs and services. So first off, we have 
uh, the program Sustainability, and this focuses on programming to encourage students to take on sustainable practices through education and activities. Uh, we also have Stress Less, uh, which focuses on mental health resources, stress relief, and student wellness through a number of initiatives through fall and winter. Uh, the picture up here you can see is one initiative we call Doggo Time. Uh, it's pretty amazing. It's one of my personal favorites. We also have the SAMU Cares. Uh, this is a bursary funded by SAMU for students who are in financial need, and this helps students and their families with that financial assistance. We also have Artworks, and this consists of several art-related initiatives that include the Student Art Gallery, Gray Gallery, and an artwork fundraiser known as Gray Works. One thing that I'm very proud of is our student refugee program. Uh, essentially, a small portion of SAMU fees go towards the tuition and housing of a student refugee for four years. Services, we also offer a breakfast club. Um, this service provides students with free healthy breakfasts uh, once a week in fall and winter semesters. It did look a little different over the course of the pandemic. However, we still had a variety of options. Services, we also offer one called peer support, and this is a service that's about students helping students. Uh, they're trained volunteers that provide a confidential space where students can talk about their troubles in a safe environment. And up here, you can see our new peer support space. We also have Safe Walk, which is a volunteer-based service that safely assists students walking to their cars, bus stop, or the LRT station after dark. A new service that we've created also is the Student Ombud Support, and this helps provide students with an impartial, confidential, and supportive state, uh, space for those who are facing academic or non-academic issues at McEwen. Study Buddies. This one came out of the pandemic. It was very inventive. I'm really glad that we created this and ultimately it aims to connect students uh, to the McEwen and SAMU greater community and it provides students with a supportive working environment to increase motivation and accountability. The Pantry, another one of our many amazing services, and this helps subsidize the cost of groceries by providing students with food hampers uh, in times of need. We also have student groups, and there are over 50 plus student groups to be a part of at McEwen uh, to connect with their fellow peers. And it's a great place to explore ideas, advocate for causes, and create community through activities. This is actually where I first got my start and how I got used to the McEwen community. And it was a stepping stone into everything else. And then events. Uh, throughout the year, we host a variety of events that are fun, informative, and a great way to meet other students. Some of the main events that are offered throughout the year include Fall Fest and Winter Fest, which are concerts hosted on campus that feature live music, exhibition booths uh, from local businesses. We have a beer gardens, food truck, and prizing. Uh, this year, unfortunately, just because of COVID, we are not having a Fall Fest, but those resources are being diverted to have our largest Winter Fest ever. Uh, another main SAMU event includes the SAMU Speaker Series. Uh, these are celebrity speaking engagements hosted in person in the fall and winter semesters that are typically ticketed at a subsidized rate, uh, but this past year they've been off free online. And in the past we've had artists uh, Tegan and Sarah present, Tan France from Queer Eye, uh, Justin Baldoni from Jane the Virgin, and of course our favorite Bill Nye the Science Guy. During winter break, we also have certain initiatives um, for both at home programming for students not wanting to travel and domestic and international trips planned by SAMU. Uh, we also have a various uh, miscellaneous initiatives such as meal kits, activity nights, water park trips, trivia nights, uh, social justice education sessions and more. Uh, there are also many great ways to get involved with SAMU. Uh, this can range from assisting with events, helping students through our uh, services and programs, and so much more. Uh, so one thing we have is also the health and dental plan. All part-time and full-time students uh, paying students association fees are covered under the SAMU health and dental plan that's provided by Gallivan. And if you want more information on that, make sure to check out www.mystudentplan.ca slash McEwen. Um, and here you can learn how to opt out if you have alternative coverage and how to make claims as well. 
Uh, we also have the GRIF. Uh, this is McEwen Student Newspaper, which is a service under SAMU. Currently, we publish uh, magazines seven times a year between September and April. This past year, they were all online, the editions of them. So if you want to check them out, feel free to do that. Um, but this year, they'll be back in person. And lastly, governance. So this is how students can get involved with managing our organization. And that can be by becoming a student's counselor, a member of the highest governing body, uh, becoming a general committee member, or running and working full-time for the Students Association as an executive. And if students are interested in this, they can learn more about this during Gov Week, which is occurring from September 14th to 16th this year. And that is it. Well, thank you all so much for listening. I know there's a lot of information in this. If you're ever looking for some direction, you can always reach out to us. And all that information is also available at samu.ca. Thank you so much, Miles, for the presentation. Uh, and again, yes, please uh, tell the student you're supporting to stop by at the SAMU building. There will be people there to help you as well. Uh, and, they, and like Miles is saying, there is a lot of information. They don't need to know all this all at once. They can, we can take our time in helping uh, your student uh, figure out these services available to them. Uh, and we have people all over the campus that can direct them to the right places. Uh, Next, we're going to have uh, Karen. Karen's going to speak. She's the manager of our academic advising center. So, Karen, are you ready to go? I am. Yeah. Thank you, Brett. So, hopefully, everyone can hear me, and I appreciate the opportunity to engage with everyone this evening. Um, you know, prior to becoming a parent a few years ago, I, you know, thought I would be very cool, and and all of a sudden, I realized I am not, and that has not changed. So, um, I can certainly empathize with the excitement and also the anxiety and, and stress that comes with any new milestone. And while I'm, I'm a ways from the university or post-secondary experience, um, you know, certainly any milestone in anyone that we're supporting's journey is something that we want to make sure that, that we can do uh, successfully and support them. So I'm going to share a few slides as well because I've approached this again. My name is Karen and I'm in the Academic Advising Center. And in my 11 years of academic advising, um, you know, certainly we've learned kind of that we work as a network and we best serve students by sending students to the appropriate areas and how we can kind of best direct them. So I'm going to share uh, some resources with you that I thought would be very beneficial and some quick links in terms of where can I find some information for students. So I'm going to share this with you right away here. So we will start this for everyone. And I've, what I've wanted to do is present this as kind of achieving student success through support, um, because that is the ultimate goal for, for anyone that is supporting any student is, is that element of student success. So one of the kind of resources that I think is very valuable and you can bookmark it is uh, something that our portfolio uh, took on as an initiative in that last year, and that was a, a joint student success page. And if you go through this page, it actually looks at the different areas and categories of different pieces that learning, uh, equity, diversity, and inclusion, um, all of the different areas in the university that lead to student success and contact information points. And so when students and their support uh, people are looking for where to find information, this is something and a resource that you can access very readily. And one of the things that's really important to note is that we are partnering to empower our students. So we are directing and educating through our campus services, having that reinforcement and messaging um, from their support individuals really, really helps in, in getting that student the success pieces that they need. So some of the key responsibilities that we are looking at doing to provide academic support and again in terms of what we, we look to do is you know at utmost important is the respect and maintaining our student privacy so when a student contacts us we ha usually have mechanisms in place like the McEwen student email address or the um, you know a student ID number where we are ensuring that we share academic information directly with the student. And so when someone is advocating on their behalf, I am we we usually we're not able to share that information with a parent or with a support person without the appropriate permission of the student. And so that is about most important 
important. So if, if you are connecting on behalf of a student, if an advisor or if somebody does, you know, ask that the student contact us, it is to ensure that we are respecting and man maintaining that student privacy piece. We also take very importantly the ability to provide resources and instruction and direction that lead to independent decision making. So we can't make decisions for students. We can provide them with the resources and the information the best that we can to, so they are empowered to make those decisions on their own. So a question often I would get from students is, you know, what's, in, what's a GPA boosting class to take? And, uh, you know, that can vary depending on a student's strength. And so, you know, our role is really to provide them with that information to make those decisions. And of utmost importance as well as providing that safe and respectful space for students to ask questions. So we definitely want to make sure students, when they're accessing, you know, advising or any service on campus, that they feel that they can ask any question. And we have heard all sorts of questions. So it's something that we want to make sure that, you know, we've never, if it's a new question, you know, we appreciate it because we'll look into it and it gives us a challenge and something to look into. But if it's something that, you know, a student is perhaps afraid or shy to ask, you know, please encourage them to, to come forward and ask any question. And so what we kind of conceptualize is some key responsibilities and you being able to provide academic support you know, is to you ask the student if they have connected with the service area. So, for example, if they've talked to an academic advisor, do they know that they have academic advisors available? Um, you know, that's always really important. Encouraging students to build a connection and familiarity. So, you know, when you're looking to, to access a space or you're accessing a service, that you know that you can go back and you can ask the questions and you have that familiarity. That's absolutely something that you can encourage them to do. Uh, reminding students to stay up to date with communications that are sent out and I you know appreciate having a, a very busy inbox and students are going to have you know definitely busy inboxes as well but it's important to make sure that they are accessing uh, the information that we are sending to them and that way they are up to date on uh, changes or upcoming events things that are important in the academic cycle so certainly you know that that's something that we you can encourage them to do as well and tell them to talk to their professors. One of the wonderful things about McEwen is, is our focus on teaching and that our faculty members are committed to being excellent teachers and they are approachable. And so while a professor can seem uh, unapproachable in a student's mind, they, they relish the opportunity to connect with students. So it's important even in the first year to have conversations and engage with their professors. So when might be some important times in the year to connect? Again, in terms of, you know, what, when can you direct students? And a, a common resource is that academic schedule. And these are what I always tell students, kind of our non-negotiable deadlines, because they are our firm deadlines in our academic schedule. And so for students kind of to know when uh, they can add and drop classes, you know, reminding them, hey, if you, you need to make changes, have you, have you made sure you, that deadline's coming up, maybe reach out to an advisor for assistance. Um, you know, the deadlines for acad academic withdrawal without academic penalty, uh, final exam ranges, all of these things, these are just really common deadlines, again, that students should be familiar with. But as someone supporting a student, it's really, really valuable to have that understanding of the cycle. So then you are able to to kind of understand maybe when might be a good opportunity to have students reach out. So a couple of quick questions that we got in advance that I wanted to, to address that, uh, that uh, came forward in terms of just uh, things that might be out there. So with regards to enrollment and classes that are waitlisted. So what happens if a student's on a waitlist and uh, they're not able to get that class? How do they know? So our programming is designed to make sure that there are sections reserved for specific programs and those specific students and that there are adequate seats for those students. So in the case of programs where you have multiple sections and you have lots of options, you know, we certainly encourage them to look for alternatives to meet those requirements. Talking to an advisor can help identify those different things. As well, it's important to be flexible on the days and times of course delivery. So a lot of first year uh, larger sections will have different delivery modes. Um, they'll be offered on different days or times. So having that flexibility can help the student 
then adjust their enrollment accordingly. So there are absolutely options in place in terms of whether or not a student gets that section they really want off the wait list. Um, but again, every effort is made to make sure that we do have the appropriate sections for our students to be able to progress in their programming. Textbooks and materials, how does the student know what they need? So required text information is available through individualized book lists through the bookstore. But one of the things I wanted to highlight was that the ad drop deadline is Friday, September 17th for the fall term and every term will have a different ad drop deadline. And that's the deadline by which students can make changes to course schedules. And so what we find is that during that period of time between the start of term and that deadline is that students do make lots of changes. And so if they are getting course outlines, they're reviewing the information about what's required. Um, sometimes, you know, if they go at least to the first day of class, they look at the course outline, determine if they're gonna stay in that class buying in advance you know certainly they absolutely need that course is is something you can do and you'll have that list available but changes can be made to a schedule and sometimes students will then have to return books so just keep that in mind if, if students are looking to access texts so is there an advisor available for students to make sure they're taking the right courses and yes and that is my specific area in terms of the uh, the academic advising piece so there are academic advisors in each program area as well as in our center. And they are this, in the program areas, those are the specialists that understand the program of study. And so when we talk about product, program of study, that's the, the courses that a student is going to be, be taking to complete their credential. And the advisors are there to help educate students on the requirements. And if they're encountering any difficulties um, in their planning, they're the professionals on campus to be able to assist with that. We do have the expectation that students are enrolled themselves in courses. Uh, there are 38 advisors, uh, academic advisors across campus, and I think our uh, student enrollments are 18,000. So, I mean, in terms of our ability to support one on one, we have those options, absolutely, but we do provide those resources um, to students about course planning. And usually it is an advisor that uh, develops them. So, yes, we have. App, app, academic advisors and they are the the individuals that you the students can certainly reach out to just moving this and my next slide so this, if you are looking for advising, mcewen.ca slash advising uh, is where you can get directed to the program academic advisors as well as general academic advising through the center as well. And uh, I think my last Q&A that I have is who and where can student students turn to when they're struggling in coursework? You know, we encourage students to talk to their professor first when it comes to the course content. Um, that professor is doing the grading, they're engaging with that student uh, through the lecture, so they're going to have that best sense of that student's progress. And uh, it's, again, really important to encourage them to reach out to talk to the professor. There are many different areas that provide learning resources. So on that first link that I provided with regards to the student success page, um, you know, certainly encouraging individuals to take a look at the different resources uh, about, you know, regarding kind of the, the classroom piece of writing and learning services um, would be one of them. If students are in, if there's a math and stats help center for students who are navigating mathematics or statistics courses. Um, those are all really great areas to, to access for support. And then third, the, the, the program academic advisor is, is a resource as well. And that's because if students are trying to determine sometimes uh, issues around withdrawing, do they need to drop a class, the advisor can help talk through that process with them. Again, ultimately they won't make a decision and, and tell a student to, to withdraw or not withdraw from a course, but they can provide the context of what that impact is going to be like for them if they make that decision. And so it really is important that they can do that level of connection. So I appreciate my time with you this evening. And if there's any questions, I'm, I'm happy to, to address them and uh, our link to our advising page is there for you all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Karen. We are going to have chances for uh, questions after our next presenter. And just so you all know, in the chat box, there's a chat function there. Uh, Danny's actually posting all of these links, so you don't have to write them all down. So they are available to you. And this session is being recorded, and we will be sending it out to everybody. So uh, thank you so much, Karen, for the information. I'm sure we might have some questions later on. Uh, 
our next speaker is Tori Pino, the Chair of Wellness and Psychological Services. And he's going to talk to you more about how we're going to rec how recognizing uh, mental health in the student you're supporting and the different service uh, and the service we have available to them here on campus. So Tori, I'll let you take it away. Thanks, Brett. I'm just going to share my screen here. Awesome. So um, just wanted just wanted to thank you guys all for sticking with us through this uh, through the presentation so far. Um, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about some of the uh, mental health and wellness services that we offer at McEwen University. Um, it, mental health and wellness is an interesting topic. I know that an orientation is going on around the city right now in various institutions. Everyone is going to be talking about how you know, mental health is important, mental health is important. I think one of the great things about working at McEwen University is knowing that uh, McEwen really does put money where its mouth is and really in terms of has one of the best funded uh, mental health departments that, that, that I'm aware of. Uh, we have a fantastic counselor to student ratio and there's a, a, a bunch of supports that I hope to tell you about today. And uh, just so you don't have to remember the, these, this information. All this information, there'll be some links and website information uh, throughout the presentation. So I know for some students, they really want to uh, get into counseling uh, and access mental health services as soon as they begin at the institutions. Uh, many students that re reach out to us had counselors through high school thing, uh, or, you know, during, you know, before, before arriving here. Um, others, you know, you know, life happens, situations occur, and I really just want to give you guys some information about um, some key information about uh, that you might find important while you're here. So I think some of the key takeaways from this is that mental health services at McEwen University are free. That is an awesome deal compared to $200 an hour. That's that's typically done in private practice. Uh, the services are confidential. Uh, the counselors that work here don't uh, don't speak to professors or deans or family or friends. Sorry, family, um, unless your uh, unless your uh, your child wants to us to explicitly speak with you. Um, we're a multidisciplinary team composed of registered psychologists. We have we have clinical social workers as well as health promotion specialists. Um, we work with students with all sorts of issues with all sorts of issues and concerns. Um, including depression, um, anxiety, uh, self-esteem issues, feeling overwhelmed, uh, relationship issues, uh, eating concerns, uh, substance use, uh, grief and loss, as well as homesickness. Um, moving forward here, um, if for anyone that's tried to uh, um, plan anything uh, over the last year and a half, uh, you know, what we say, um, it, whether it's been, you know, Christmas or a wedding or anything like that, services change, things modify, and uh, it's always possible that things will modify. But I can say over the last 18 months that we've been, uh, my department has successfully supported students uh, uninterrupted through this entire time, whether it's remotely or in person. So for the latest information, please check out mcewen.ca slash WPS. Um, so I think uh, some of the key information uh, that would be good to know is that the first point of contact for us at McEwen University with, with some of the counselors is uh, through something called an initial consultation. It's a free, confidential, 30-minute conversation that we have with students. We figure out what's kind of going on for them, what's bringing them, them to our service, what kind of, you know, what, what kind of help are they looking for. And once we've got an idea of that, we kind of help them figure out what is the next step going forward. So maybe it's connecting them with a, con a counselor or a social worker for some ongoing service. Uh, maybe it's connecting them to other services or support services, advising, uh, uh, access and disability resources, uh, SAMU. Um, maybe it's, you know, maybe we can wrap up life's problems in a 30 minute conversation, but knowing that sometimes life's problems take more than 30 minutes to resolve, uh, we at the very least will make sure that when we finish with that student, we've got a plan going. So uh, starting September 7th, uh, we are very excited um, to announce that we will be back providing in-person services after 18 months of video and telephone uh, services. But that will be in addition to both 
providing remote services. So the video and the telephone aren't going away. It's really going to be what the student wants. And if there are students who are keen about getting started, please reach out to us um, before September 7th, and we'll set, we'll set up that consult via video or telephone. Um, just a few other programs that we offer, um, mental health programs, is one is called My Health. It's a free Blackboard course that offered through McEwen that offers a bunch of well on a bunch of wellness topics that McEwen students have told us are important to them. So we provide information on uh, uh, learning strategies, how to uh, improve diet, physical activity, financial wellness, healthy relationships, things like that. Um, and uh, students, uh, it's, it's an engaging course and uh, it's, it's free. So if students are interested in finding out uh, some wellness topics, please check that out. We offer group counseling, both virtually and in person as well. We're, we offer pre-recorded workshops and live and video workshops that will be offered throughout the year that can be accessed through our site, um, mcewen.ca slash WPS. As well, we have a peer health education team, which is a volunteer team um, that if there are any students listening to this uh, that they might want to get involved with in the future, uh, it's a peer-to-peer -peer health promotion team. So we really try to connect with students on topics that are important to them when it's relevant. So um, providing information on safe partying during Halloween, healthy relationships during Valentine's, study strategies during, um, you know, right before um, uh, final exams. So we really try to meet students where they're at and provide relevant health and wellness information. Um, and uh, running through this fairly quick here, but I just wanted to pause really quick to just kind of share a quick story. Um, at least once a month working with a student, uh, a student will like put their head down for a second and just like put their hands in their head and be like, oh man, my parents were right. And I just, because I've got some parents on the line here, I wanted to just kind of give you a couple key phrases that you may have shared with students that you were right and is you will still be right if you want to share this information with them. Uh, maybe phrase it a little bit different than when they were six, but uh, the first one is go to bed. So I really, really can't overemphasize the importance of getting enough sleep when you go come to post-secondary. That's seven to nine hours is a sweet spot. It helps with memory retention. It helps with memory uh, retrieval. So, you know, recalling what you've studied. It helps with, um, you know, managing our emotions, it helps with stress management, it helps with our immune system, which might be important during the next few months. So super important, go to bed. Next one, go get some exercise. Um, McEwen University has a ton of free gym, uh, swimming pool. Uh, university life can be fair, fairly sedentary sometimes um, in terms of, you know, Classes, you're usually sitting down. Lectures, you're sitting down. Studying, you're, you're, you're sedentary. So really introducing some regular movement in your life can be really beneficial. And uh, finally, go and play. Um, it's really important to get out there and, you know, in as much as like school is important, GPAs are important, I think it's equally important to get out there, get involved in university life, meet, make friends, check out towers, you know, check out, uh, which is our campus bar, check out other things, have some fun, try some new things and and, uh, and make the most of the student life that is that is here. So uh, I wish, you know, um, all the parents are here and all students a lot of success and thanks for having me. Perfect, thank you so much, Tori. So we're coming up in 11 minutes on our, our, our parent orientation and we do have a bunch of questions in uh, the chat. Uh, I'm trying to get as many as possible. And so I'm gonna ask my speakers to kind of jump in when I ask the question. Uh, Karen, you're probably gonna handle a, a lot of these, but I do wanna kind of go through some of them. Um, what if a child wanted to go into a different area but did not know how to, or if they signed up for the arts, uh, when can they transfer into a proper course or major? Sure, I can. That, that's definitely up my alley. So um, with regard, and, and I think of what I want to preface it with is that that's one of the wonderful things about university is students changing their minds. And especially when you're just getting started, 
Um, students will pick programs. Uh, sometimes maybe their, their friends are going into something and you start taking coursework and that's where you, you find a, a passion for something or um, you're, you're working towards something different. So changing your mind about what you want to do is definitely, uh, it's okay. And we're, we're definitely here to support kind of that process. So if a student is looking to change programs entirely, so there's a couple of different pieces there with regards to, let's say a degree program. If you're looking at staying within that degree program but changing a major or changing your focus then um, you're still in that program and so the process is going to be a little bit different in terms of being able to declare a different program path and that's certainly possible and when you're starting out really early on um, the flexibility of the credits that are taken um, are definitely there so that's a, what I would say is an easier process in terms of whether or not you're just kind of changing your path within that degree or program structure that you're you're currently in. Now, if you are a Bachelor of Arts student and you actually want a Bachelor of Science in nursing, that's actually going to be a full uh, program change, not, not a major change or a program path within that your existing degree, but you are changing programs. And in essence, that is an entirely new application process, you are subject to applying again to that program, meeting the requirements, competitive or non-competitive, depending what the program is for that. And, you know, I definitely would advise a student if they're thinking about a, a full program change, to identify that that's the process that they have to do. It is like applying like a new student. Um, but once you start university, it's really, really important to acknowledge that those grades and the coursework will then have an impact on admissions to another program. So without getting too far into kind of those in-depth explanations, you know, I would say to reach out to an advisor and in that situation in our center, we're able to support students to understand that process. And so it is entirely, you know, short answer, it's entirely possible. Um, and, you know, to reach out for support on how to do that in terms of the, the navigating piece, whether it's within the scope of your existing program or a full program change. Perfect. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, for those questions specifically for advising, it might be best to kind of book an appointment because they get very specific per student. I do want to ask the question, and I must answer this myself, are the textbooks online only if it's online course or do they still have to pay and buy a book? Uh, what I would recommend doing is you can actually go to the M Store uh, website. You can type in your student ID number uh, and they'll actually provide you with your book list. What we recommend is that wait until your first day of classes. Your professor will give you an overview of what you need to uh, get for your textbooks. And if there is an online version or if there's one you can buy in person. Uh, one of the questions I want to bring up is, Will, uh, will we require uh, a computer for taking notes in classes to keep up? Uh, Miles, you're a student. Do you, do you think that should people, should students have computers today in school, like in the, in the classroom? Yeah, so personally for me, I've always used a computer. Um, it's for me, it helps organize my notes. However, it is not mandatory whatsoever. If your uh, support person or your child likes to take notes in hand, um, there is that. However, you know, there is Blackboard and we do have um, some computers available around McEwen as well, if that is a barrier at all. So there are a bunch of options, but personally for me, um, I've, I've always liked having a computer to keep it organized. Perfect. And the library does have a lot of computer stations and they do have uh, loaners available uh, to, to students. So uh, it's totally a preference for that one. But uh, thank you so much, Miles. Um, I do want to ask about, uh, there's lots of questions. <laughs> uh, is there a first aid room? My daughter. Uh, so yeah, so we do actually have the medical center on campus so that just across the street. So we do have the, Medi the McEwen Health Center. Uh, it is treated like a uh, um, typical Medi Center that you would see around the, the city. But the nice thing about this one, it is reserved for our uh, students, staff and faculty. So the, the wait times will be a lot less. So if you do have anyone that wanted to use our the health center, there will be doctors available for them. Uh, how would you obtain a U-Pass for transportation as well as your student ID card? Um, Miles, I'll answer the student ID card if you want to do the U-Pass part, but the student ID card, you can actually go online on the, on the library site and submit your picture, uh, and then they'll, the library will email you when it's ready for your student to pick it up. Uh, they can, if you don't have a um, means of doing that at home, you can actually come to campus over the next uh, two weeks here. We are doing pictures in person and then get their card done. And then, uh, Miles, let you talk about the UPass. 
Yeah, so the U Pass is one of the services offered by SAMU. Essentially, is it a sub? It's a subsidized bus pass for the semester um, that students can uh, get. In the past years, it has been a sticker that usually goes on your student ID. However, soon we are moving to what's called an art card, um, and this is for the whole greater Edmonton area. However, there has been a delay with art cards. So starting today, students can use their IDs for uh, L transportation for uh, busing in the greater Edmonton area. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, and and uh, other presenters, if you see a question here that you really think needs to get uh, done in time, please feel free to to jump in. Um, I do want to ask uh, uh, instructors um, for the courses that are not fully online. Is it not sh is is it not showing as an instructor at times? Will fully online courses still have classes? Uh, where kids will ha have to get to interact with their instructions and classmates. Does anyone want to jump in on that one? I can jump in if you'd like, Brett. So if a section that a student is enrolled in is a fully online section, um, there is no in-person component to that. So there, uh, the engagement would be done through our learning management system, which is currently Blackboard. And so opportunities to engage through discussions and however uh, that engagement has been designed by a faculty member um, would happen through, through that learning management system. But in terms of the, any, any in-person obligation for a fully online course, um, there would not be uh, that engagement piece. I would draw the attention to fully online courses as well to just have the student double check to see whether it is synchronous or asynchronous in terms of the uh, engagement. But um, for the most part, if it's a fully online course with no time specific, then there is no in-person uh, or online specific engagement that a student would have to undertake. Perfect. Thank you, Karen. Uh, I did want to ask, uh, will there be parent meeting or information for our students that are staying in residence? If you have someone staying in residence, uh, I would reach out to the residence uh, uh, department themselves. There will be a, a residence orientation. Uh, they do have that. I believe it's going to be online, but they also have their move-in day. I don't have that specific information, but if you are living in residence, you want to connect with them directly. Uh, another question, is there study hall or library for students to go between classes? Uh, yes, we've actually just got a brand brand new-ish library because we've had construction going on for the, over the entire summer. For those of us working on campus, we're very happy the construction's over. Uh, but yes, we're going to have a beautiful library space uh, with computers and uh, spots for students to study in between classes. Uh, and that will be available to them starting September 7th. I just want to get a couple more before we get in there. Um, actually, uh, is my Blackboard the online system for online learning? Karen, you want to touch on that one? You want to know much about Blackboard? Yeah, currently our learning management system is Blackboard. And so students will access that through the McEwen portal. And uh, that's where they will be able to engage in the, the online learning components uh, in terms of course outline. Lots of the information will be will be run through Blackboard. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, someone mentioned what time will the school be open and, and closed? Uh, I got to remember, uh, let me type in the chat to D uh, Danny if you know that. Oh, you have it down there, 830 to 430. That's our 830 to 430 is our office hours. That's typically when all of our services are open. But I believe the university itself is open at 7 a.m. and closes at 10 or 11 p.m. I do want to check our hours. They are on our website. Uh, we are, have been changing it uh, over the last year with the COVID restrictions, but we will have a set time uh, on our website for our hours. But typically our services are open 8.30 to 4.30 if anyone wanted to access them. And other than that, I do want to bring it to an end because uh, I do want to announce our two uh, winners for, I did do a draw of all of our participants just a couple of minutes ago. So drum roll please, we do have our first one, we have Mary Burns, so congratulations to Mary Burns. And we also have a Robin Koning. So Robin and Mary, congratulations. You are the winners for our 
our prize. I'll be in touch with you and send you a nice, beautiful uh, uh, hoodie or sweatshirt that you can wear for in front of your stu uh, students you're supporting. So congratulations. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Like we said, we have recorded this presentation. We will send it out to, to all of you. Uh, if you do have any questions, you can email the proper uh, location, like the advising center, or if you're not sure where to go, they can email firstyear at mcewen.ca. Other than that, thank you so much for tuning in and we welcome you and the students you're supporting to our university. Have a great night.